Welcome to part two of my video series exploring NEO's solid state battery technology coming in 2022. In the past video, part one, I talked about the energy density of NEO's solid state batteries and we made some estimations for what I believed would be the actual pack level energy density and compared that to Tesla's 4680 batteries found in the structural battery packs. However, is it possible that the 360 watt hours per kilogram that I and others assume to be at the cell level is actually the energy density of the entire pack? Let's explore this possibility for just a second and talk about how it changes the entire equation. I'm Jonathan and welcome to Cleaner Watt. In the first video, I went into great detail about how I got all these energy density estimates at the pack level for these different battery packs. And as you can see in that video, I came to the conclusion that Tesla's 4680 batteries found in their structural battery pack would have a pack level energy density higher than that of NEO's 150 kilowatt hour solid state battery pack. However, this was based on the assumption that the 360 watt hours per kilogram number that William Lee mentioned at NEO Day was at the cell level and not the pack level. As I watched through and studied the NEO Day presentation more and more, there is a possibility that William Lee was actually saying the energy density of the entire pack would be 360 watt hours per kilogram. Here are some reasons why that may be a possibility. During the presentation, William Lee went on about their batteries being not only chargeable, but also swappable and upgradable. Once NEO releases this 150 kilowatt hour solid state battery pack, it will not only fit in the ET7 sedan, but it should also fit in their older vehicles as well. So if it's true that these batteries are swappable and upgradable, then the form factor, the actual size of the pack, has to be somewhat similar to fit in an old vehicle. This was confirmed when he mentioned that the 70, 84, and 100 kilowatt hour battery packs had the same shape and size, although they had about a 20% capacity increase between the packs. So if you do the quick math, if you take a 70 kilowatt hour battery and increase it to an 84 kilowatt hour battery, that's a 20% increase. Also, if you start with an 84 kilowatt hour battery and you move to a 100 kilowatt hour battery, that's also a 20% increase. So what William Lee is saying is they were able to keep the battery pack around the same size and shape, but yet still increase the capacity by 20%. Now just for a second, going back to William Lee's comments about this battery pack, he said once again, quote, we adopt the most advanced production ready solid state battery tech to improve the energy density by 50% through material and process innovations. So if NEO's new 150 kilowatt hour solid state battery really is the same shape and size as the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, this 50% energy density increase would be needed in order to achieve that increased capacity without an increased size. If you move from the 233 watt hours per kilogram energy density estimate that we had for the 100 kilowatt hour pack, and you move up to 360 watt hours per kilogram, and that's assumed to be a pack level energy density number, that represents a 55% increase in energy density at the pack level. This is within that 50% mark that William Lee talked about. So if this train of thought is true, this potentially means that NEO could be ahead even at the pack level at the end of 2022 over Tesla's 4680 battery packs. Here's what that revised chart might look like if this 360 watt hours per kilogram is the pack level energy density for NEO's solid state battery pack. Now let's step back for a minute and talk about what this means and if this is really even realistic. Now if we start with an energy density of 360 watt hours per kilogram at the pack level and we want to move backwards and find out what the energy density is at the cell level, we have to figure out how much packing material was needed for this battery. 
Remember, this is a hybrid solid state battery, not a full solid state battery. So it still requires a lot of packaging and cooling material. So let's assume around a 23 to 23 and a half percent packing loss and energy density, that means that you still have at the cell level a battery cell, a solid state battery cell with an energy density of around 440 watt hours per kilogram. Now when you put this 440 watt hours per kilogram number on the cell level number for a semi solid state battery, that becomes a little less realistic with what I've seen in research. So because this 440 watt hours per kilogram at the cell level seems unrealistic, and maybe I'm wrong, but it made me kind of think about these numbers once again and seeing if there is a way to support my first thesis with this 50% energy density increase number nonetheless. What's interesting is when I went back and looked at my numbers, I think you can support my past conclusion with a whole different approach and come up with a very similar estimation for the watt hours per kilogram at the pack level for NEO solid state batteries. In the past video, we talked about how the 37% energy density increase from NEO was moving from an 84 kilowatt hour pack to the 100 kilowatt hour pack. This is why we came up with a 233 watt hours per kilogram energy density at the pack level for the 100 kilowatt hour pack. Now I'm actually thinking that the 37% increase was an increase over the 70 kilowatt hour pack. So in that press release, when Neil mentioned a 37% energy density increase, I now believe they were talking about a move from a 70 kilowatt hour pack to a 100 kilowatt hour pack. And that 37% energy density number does explain the fact of gaining that extra 30 kilowatt hours of capacity with that kind of energy density increase. And if that is true, then we know the NEO 70 kilowatt hour pack has an energy density of 135 watt hours per kilogram, because NEO said that. A 37% increase from the 70 to the 100 kilowatt hour pack would represent an energy density around 185 watt hours per kilogram. And if you move up from 185 watt hours per kilogram and give a 50% energy density increase from that pack to the solid state pack, that gives you a watt hours per kilogram estimate of the solid state pack of 277 watt hours per kilogram. Then once again, if you account for the packing and cooling material that will be necessary for the semi-solid state battery pack, that easily gets you to the 360 watt hours per kilogram cell level number once again. So in conclusion, no matter how you look at it, it is possible that this 360 watt hours per kilogram number is a pack level measurement from NEO. However, as I explained in the past video and as I explained in this video, it sure appears like the 360 watt hours per kilogram is at the cell level. I guess we'll have to find out when NEO actually gives more details to see which theory is right. Either way, NEO's new battery tag does offer really good promise and I am really excited to see it come to market. So what do you think? Do you think NEO's 360 watt hours per kilogram number is at the cell level or do you think that's a pack level measurement? Make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and that you stay tuned to future videos because coming next week I'm going to put out part three of this series where I dive into details about the chemistries of NEO's hybrid solid state battery. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking that like button because that helps other people find the video as well. I also want to take a moment here at the end of the video to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community that I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.